Um, we, Mark's preaching there, and, and we like to send uh, a couple of elders over there anyway. So Jim and Menard are kind of over there more regularly than, than Mark and myself. But I want to I wanna just, before we start getting into the word, I want to share just um, yesterday, uh, Dave Berham, who's our, one of our relational mission oversight. Many of you know Dave. Um, he came down, or came up from Chafford 100. Uh, everybody says, where's Chafford 100? I say Grays, and everybody says, where's Grays? And then I say Lakeside, and everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not far from Lakeside. So he came up, and he did some training with us, and um, we went out on the streets in uh, Newhall. We went out uh, knocking on some doors, and 22 conversations were had Amen. yesterday in one way or another. We prayed for eight people in one way or another. There are a couple of people that were really interested in the gospel and heard the gospel. And then there were five people that said, we might go to your church in Newhall tomorrow, today. So we've been praying that that would happen. We'll see. Maybe none of them come. But it was a really challenging, a very interesting time. We were only out for an hour. And, yeah, 22, 22 conversations around life. And, and a couple of doors just shut in our face, but it's fine. We suffer for the gospel. It's all good. So uh, if you're interested in, in, in that kind of thing, uh, street evangelism or evangelism in general, um, we're looking to put together a, a team. And Jim's going gonna, Jim's gonna to head that up. Um, so if that is something of interest to you, you're welcome to speak to me today. Alternatively, get hold of Jim. Uh, he'll be here tonight, I think. Um, or, or message him in the week if that's something that, you know. If you're sitting there and you've got butterflies in your tummy right now, it's probably a good sign that that's you. <laughs> right? That's the way I kind of work sometimes, you know. You just know, oh, actually, getting a feeling about that. Explore it. Because actually, people need to hear the gospel. They need to have the opportunity to respond to Jesus. And uh, we want to continue to do that in Newhall and in other areas in the town. So pray for us as well um, as we do that. Right, we are continuing our foundations uh, Sundays. And this week we're looking at kingdom warfare. Interesting that... We're going through freedom in Christ and that brings up a whole host of things. And then it falls on the weekend where Israel, God's people, are under attack. And uh, our battle is not against the flesh and blood. It's against the principalities and powers and we're going to look at that in a bit. But let's pray that we would have open hearts to what God has to say to us today because actually this is a very real and present thing in our lives and we want to be aware of what's going on and be as well equipped as we can to, to wage war. So Lord, we just want to commit this time to you. Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord, that it is in, encouraging to us, that it shows us how we should live our lives. And Lord, I just want to pray for all of us, Lord, this morning, that we would have open hearts, open ears to hear what you have to say to us this morning. That, Lord, throughout this journey, this season that we're in, this would just penetrate and permeate and grow in our lives, that when things are thrown against us, we can stand in Jesus' name and not falter, not be swayed, but stand firm in Jesus' name. Amen. So we looked a little while ago at the dominion of darkness and the kingdom of God, the two kingdoms that are uh, in the spiritual realm. And Satan holds most of mankind under his influence. All you've got to do is look at the TV, read a news report, take a walk around your town. (laughs) Um, 
And sin has given him a legal hold over human beings. But God is in the business of rescuing people. Taking us out of that dominion of darkness. Dealing with the sin problem. And adopting us and placing us into his kingdom. Where he is ruling and reigning. And he, he dealt with the sin problem through the blood and the broken body of his son Jesus on the cross. And his kingdom has invaded Satan's territory and is bringing deliverance to the captives. How many of you were once a captive? And now you're free. Amen. Amen. But we're at war. A few months ago we spoke about, well I spoke about how, how I see different elements of the church. How some of it is, is like, a, like a school where we're learning. And then some, sometimes it's like a hospital where, we've been, we, where we're hurt and we're wounded and actually there's a place of sanctuary, safety and healing. And then there's another pl- place where it's like an army barracks. Where we are either prepared or we are at war. So we're talking about people today who are on active duty. We are... God's hands and feet on this earth and we are his soldiers while we're on this earth. While we're still living and breathing, that's what we are. I've said it already, Ephesians 6.12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So Satan was a fallen, was a real being, but as a fallen angel. Not going to go into detail on that. There's there's lots you can read. Look in Ezekiel 28 or Isaiah 14. For that, he took some of the angels with him. You can see that in uh, Revelation, where it talks about the third of the stars that fell from heaven. Often is related to fallen angels and uh, Satan is also known as the morning star. He also has other names. He's known as the accuser. There we are. The tempter, the liar, murderer, serpent, angel of light, the evil one or the enemy. I want to say to you this morning, the devil is not equal to God. Amen. I know plenty of Christians that walk around disarmed and defeated, not knowing actually who the devil is. But he is not equal to God. He is not all knowing, and he is not all powerful. But he does have strategies to try and disrupt us and what God is wanting to do in our lives. There's a couple of verses. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Be sober-minded, be watchful. The evil one, the accuser, the tempter, the murderer, the the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour. We looked at it before. Ephesians 6.11, put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. You've got your armour on today. We're going to read that right at the end, the full 
shebang. We've already done it. I'll mention it later about that. But Satan is vicious, cunning, and destructive. And those types of people don't play fair. And they never give you a break. Relax, there's good news coming. (laughs) He knows when it's best to attack you and attack me. Look at Jesus, right? Fasted 40 days. I struggle to fast 40 minutes. Let alone, let alone 40 days, right? Imagine. What's the longest you reckon you can go? You, personally. Who thinks they could do a day fasting, drinking just water? All right, let's start with no days. Let's start half a day. Let's we'll start half a day. Half a day. All right? One day. Two days. I'm going to jump to five days. Who could, who, could, who could do two weeks? Right, okay. How are you going to be feeling after that half a day or those seven days, man? You're going to be feeling weak and oh, looking for a nice burger or, I don't know, whatever your favourite food is. There we go. Well, praise God. Good for you, mate. But after those 40 days, Jesus was tempted, right? In his weakest moment, praise God, he stood firm and he used the word of God. The enemy, and when I talk about the enemy, I'm talking about Satan. I'm talking about the accuser, the tempter, the the evil one, the enemy, will try and accuse you, deceive you, trick you, tempt you, trap you, use sickness and fear to pull you away from God. Another another interesting thing that I think a lot of... a lot of Christians really struggle with is whether or not Christians can be possessed by demons. I want to say that Christians can't be demon possessed. Right? Because if you've given your life to Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. You have God living on your inside, on the inside of you. In your, in your spirit. It's come alive to God. It's not possible for the light and the darkness to dwell together. However, Christians can be oppressed by the enemy. What do I mean by that? I mean around you. Pushing down on you. Causing you Look away from God. It's really important that we understand these things. Satan's going to try and gain ground in your life, in my life, and influence us and oppress us. There are also some other things that can give the devil a foothold. Unresolved anger. Unforgiveness. can cause the devil to outwit us and entrap us. Fire his fiery arrows at you. But we're going to read later that we have a shield that we can use to protect us. He tries to, and and this comes out in the Freedom in Christ course, establish strongholds in our lives. 
A stronghold in the Old Testament was a fortress where the enemy troops hid out and hold out. And, and, and from there, they organized the raids on God's people. And it's really important that we break these strongholds in our lives. God doesn't want you to carry them. Doesn't want them to be something that entraps you, that keeps you being who you're called to be in God. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. We know these Bible verses, right? We know them. Most of us know them. But we can know them and not apply them. Which is a waste of time. Right? If you, if you know it, you don't apply it. You're going to walk around defeated and disarmed and open to all kinds of stuff. So, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but of divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. We don't have time today, but I'd encourage you to read that whole chapter. Paul talking about how he's, he's pretty strong in his writings. We see that. <laughs> he doesn't hold back, Paul. But he wasn't a man of great stature and I was chatting to someone the other day about that. I can't remember who it was. Just how he was, you know, he wasn't like a good looking guy, a bit disfigured and was just carrying. Yeah, he like, wouldn't be like some Adonis or anything like that. But the, the, the chapter talks about, you know, when he's coming in person, he's going to exercise his authority. Even though he's this little meek guy. encourage you to read 2 Corinthians 10. The enemy can have strongholds in our lives that are built on areas of sin, areas of bondage, that are all based on our days in the dominion of darkness. In God's kingdom, we have the grace to live in the victory. but we need to demolish the strongholds. As I said, freedom in Christ is dealing with those issues, those strongholds, many of which are built on lies about God and lies about ourselves and how God sees us and how we can stand in the presence of God having been washed in the blood of the Lamb today. But there's good news, said there was good news, Jesus has overcome. Jesus has overcome the enemy. 1 John 3 verse 8, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. The reason Jesus came to earth was to destroy the works of the devil. This is good news. It's good news. Jesus won the decisive victory over Satan on the cross. Hallelujah. Satan had a legal hold on us. Jesus destroyed that. We are legally free by the blood of Jesus. You are free. You are free this morning. But you need to learn, we need to learn how to stand. In that freedom, we need to learn how to fight 
in that freedom and on the ground that Jesus has won. Let's look at Colossians 2, verses 13 to 15. It's up there already. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities that put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. I'm going to say to you this morning, you don't, do not need to fear the devil anymore. And any schemes and plans that he has for you, you do not need to fear him or them anymore. If you are in Christ, you're free. You have the victory. I'm going to tell you the story, possibly, possibly, possibly my favourite all-time story. And I'm sorry if you've heard it before, but it's such a good story. I'm going to say it again. There was an evangelist, there was an evangelist who was born in 1859. He died in 1947. He was not whiter than white. He was human. But his name was Smith Wigglesworth. There are many, many stories of miraculous, incredible things that Smith Wigglesworth saw God do through his ministry. But by far the most amazing for me was when he was asleep at one one night. He woke up to see at the end of his bed Satan himself. Smith Wigglesworth then says, and this is the kicker, it's only you, rolled over and went back to sleep. Come on. What an absolute kicker to the enemy. How could he do that? Why did he do that? Because he knew his position, knew he was in Christ. The enemy had no hold on him. He didn't need to fear anymore. Woo, come on. Wow. I don't know if you've been in and around any demonic activity. I have. I've seen demons uh, very early on in my Christian walk, man. And, oh, man, I, myself. I was a young Christian. I didn't know. But what does that story mean to you? That story of Smith Wigglesworth. How, how would you respond in that situation? In many ways, Smith Wigglesworth was the same as you and I. Bible-believing, spirit-filled person that eats food, goes to the toilet, sleeps the same as you and me. The difference is he knew who he was in Christ and the authority that he had. Now, I praise God if you're, the, if you're a person that knows who you are and stands against the schemes of the enemy and the evil one trying to disrupt your life completely. But I know many, many Christians that don't know this, that walk around defeated. Unable to walk in the freedom and liberty that Jesus has accomplished for them on the cross through his shed blood and his broken body. So just a few things to help us on how we can overcome. The first one is that we recognise Satan's activities. That we see it for what it is. No, as a Christian, you've got a target on your back. Because a Christian that's defeated and not walking with Jesus is, is ineffective. And God doesn't want you to be like that. 
Secondly, find out the truths in God's word. These will counteract the lies of the enemy. Jesus, the great model for that, when he was tempted, he used scripture to come against the enemy. That in itself brings another challenge. How do you find out the truths in God's word? Reading it. There's nothing the devil loves more than a Christian that doesn't read their Bible. Because you're not built on a good foundation. That's the whole point of this foundation, right? To build, put good foundations in. That we can become the people of God that he's called us to be. Reject the devil's attempts to get a foothold in your life. So we need to recognise it and then reject it. Submit, the de- submit to God and resist the devil and his open and vicious attacks. Probably one of the most misquoted Bible verses in the whole of mankind. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Okay, what's the bit before it? Submit to God. Resist the devil. Any will flee from you. If you've been trying to resist the devil and you've not got anywhere, try submitting to God first. See what happens. It might just work. It might just work. Make a conscious decision to stand in the victory of Jesus. We need to make that decision and we need to stand on it. Use the authority Jesus has given to us to deal with Satan. Did you know that he's given you authority? Do you know that? There's power in his name. As I was preparing for this, I was watching, uh, watching the YouTube videos on um, uh, the song... Um, the blood of Jesus, the old, yeah, the, the old, uh, it's almost like the old, not country and western, but and I, I, I was almost tempted to, uh, to message James and say, Can we do it? But it really is really 80s. But <laughs> precious blood of the Lamb, we've got authority. Use the name of Jesus against the enemy. If you ever find yourself in a position where you are backed up against the wall with the enemy, the Bible says there's power in the name of Jesus. There's a... I'm not sure if I've told you the story. I'm sorry if I have, but it helps to reinforce these things when you have seen sort of people go through these things. There was a guy that came over to, pre- uh, to teach and preach at the Bible college. We were there, a guy called Chuba Ayo um, from a place called Nagaland. It was just an incredible guy. And one time um, people broke into his house and they had AK-47s and all sorts of uh, interesting weapons. And uh, he came downstairs and he kind of came face to face with him. And he just started using the name of Jesus. Calling out to God. Uh, Nothing else he can do, right? Tuba A, who no word of a lie, was probably about this big. He was a little guy. They don't build them particularly big in, in Nagaland. And all of a sudden these guys turned and ran. They left. He's calling on the name of Jesus. And then he turned around and there was a massive angel behind him. There's power, guys. Our battle is not in this seen realm. But we need to understand that. It's against principalities and powers in the unseen realm. When we understand that, 
it can help us go to war. Use your armour and spiritual weapons to fight the good fight. We're going to finish with this, just reading Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. And then we're going to pray. Everybody got a Bible here? Can you take that off? Turn it off. I think sometimes we can just be fed, fed, fed from the screen. Rather than open the Bible. Dust it off. If you've got a marker pen, mark it. If it's on your phone app, highlight it. We've looked at it before, so I'm not going to spend time going through it. We had a sermon in our Ephesians series on the armour of God. So if you want more information on that, I would encourage you to go and watch that on YouTube. But just to read it again helps us because it's the word of God. It says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In In all circumstances, all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. And to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. These things are not physical, these things are spiritual. With the exception of the sword of the Spirit. Because that's the word of God. You've got it. Never before have we had such access to the word of God. We carry it around on our phone, in our pockets. We can use it all all the time. We're to clothe ourselves in this stuff every day, all the time. And know that this is a spiritual battle. As much as it may manifest in the natural. This is spiritual. And we are at war. We know the end result. But we we can fight the good fight whilst we've got breath in our lungs. It may be circumstances that you face, there may be sin that just ongoing, there may be family members that just don't seem to be coming through to the Lord. It could be anything this morning that you're facing that you need to gird up your armour and keep going. We're going to sing a final song. But we love to to pray for you if you would like prayer. If you, if you are 
If you need healing, we'd love to pray for you. That. If you don't know Jesus, if Jesus isn't your Lord and Saviour and you'd like to make Jesus your Lord and Saviour, we'd love to pray with you. If you are feeling a little bit defeated, disarmed, the enemy's just giving you a right pounding, we'd love to pray with you, just to stand with you, to encourage you. But we're going to sing a song where the chorus says, Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Praise to God is a weapon that tears down the strongholds of the enemy. We see it in the Bible. Old Testament, King Jehoshaphat sent out the army, but he sent the worshippers out ahead of the army. Praise and worship is powerful to help us in our fight. So let's stand. We're going to sing. If you like prayer, please do come forward. We pray for you. Join with you in prayer. There's nothing special about anybody that prays for someone, right? It's the power of God that brings transformation. But sometimes sharing those things helps us to believe that that little bit more that God can do this stuff.